Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a Twin Flame Channel and Western Astrologer and this is a video about the full moon in Cancer taking place on December 26th at 7.32 p.m. if you happen to be on the eastern seaboard of the United States. If not, please check a local time zone for your local time. Super exciting. This is the last lunar update for 2023. We've made it through another year together, guys. Congratulations. If you celebrate, happy new year and happy holidays to you. I'm hoping you and your loved ones are well, safe, happy, and enjoying this time of quiet reflection that this last lunation brought in and this lunation is going to bring in as well if you're new here welcome at the end of every video this will be the light worker lunar update at the end of each light worker lunar update i provide something called first look which details my first impressions of the lunation after this which will be the new moon in capricorn taking place as our first new moon of next year and uh yeah I think that's it. If you want to book a reading with me, now is a fabulous time to do so. The calendar is open for the month of January. Uh, there's availability as early as the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, so it's just a couple weeks away, um, and avail availability that second week as well. If you're looking for a 30-minute reading, now is a great time to book it. You can find the link for that below this video and if you're looking for something longer you can definitely book that as well looking forward to talking with you about what's coming in the new year so here is our full moon taking place here at that fourth degree of cancer yes and our full moon is sextile to jupiter and it is also trine with Saturn. Now on the surface, this is a really positive energy. Um, these two balance each other out very nicely. Full moon in ca Cancer wants us to take account of our emotional truths and emotional realities. Jupiter will have things expand, but not in an, a, an overwhelming or pushy way in the sextiling position to the full moon and Saturn will have things be grounded and stable and rooted and from the trine position to the moon. So on the surface, everything looks good. But when I started to dig into some of the asteroids that were also having a conversation with this full moon, that's when things got a little, Hmm. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it is, hmm, interesting. So we have a trine to our creation goddess here at the first degree of Scorpio. She's a life-giving sign, a life-giving planet, but Scorpio is a sign of endings and completions. We also have an opposition to Pholus, which is conjunct the sun. Pholus's mythology is all about a little bit of self-sacrifice sometimes it can deal with toxicity and poison um we'll come back to Folis in just a second we have a conjunction to vesta here from the full moon itself which is great um a lot of dedication a lot of faithfulness generally speaking square to our shaman's asteroid down here in Libra. So certainly an understanding of lessons and things we've been through during this season of culmination as we close out a year. And then we have this sextile to Lilith in Virgo. Now, Lilith, all the planetary energies are neutral, Lilith as well, but Lilith tends to show up um, in shadow when there's a sense of feeling rejected and a real need to have things go our way when there's a sense of insecurity as a way to kind of feel secure again. And so when you add these other elements, this is when things get a little tricky. There can be some pettiness or jealousy from insecurity, a little bit of pushiness, there can be a real struggle and challenge to talk things through at this time. 
with uh, the position of Mercury and Neptune, which I'm going to get in depth with in a moment, but Mercury is retrograde. So he's not giving his best to us right now. There can be a slight amount of emotional repression uh, with Saturn being kind of so loud in his potency in conversation with the moon uh, because he's moving direct. He's going to be a more dominant influence than Jupiter will be so that there could be a sense of like stoicism or kind of pushing through. And when it comes to emotions, I haven't really seen that work well, um, but we'll get into that, like I said. And uh, yeah, this creation goddess bit speaking to the full moon is really opening up a, a sense of like, what we're done with, what we're completing, what we're ready to release that we've created, but now we're stepping away, walking away from. So like I said, the energy is, hmm, <laughs> is the best way I can describe it. In some ways, this is the perfect ending for some of the extreme energies of the year that came with significant change. Jupiter's influence isn't overwhelming since it's a sextile. It's a bit more balanced, harmonious. It's social, connective, convivial, which is perfect, you know, for holiday season and family time and end of year closing out uh, processes, tying up loose ends. And it's doing that without being overwhelming, over the top or ostentation ostentatious or blowing our emotions out of proportion, which Jupiter can do when it's speaking to the moon in um, conjunction or trine at times. And because this new full moon is in Cancer, it's also emotionally connective. So it's a great time for, um, you know, things like just checking in with yourself. How do you feel about certain things? How did you feel about the way certain things this year went and really using our emotional state as the barometer for what we'd like to change as the gauge for what we'd like to up-level and upgrade and as the kind of weather vane for what it is we need to shift within ourselves during this time, especially because of Jupiter's influence on the moon, you may feel like now's a good time to make amends, bury the hatchet, extend an olive branch with people that maybe you've drifted from or had a falling out with. The trine to Saturn also creates a lot of opportunity for emotional balance, for cool, calm, rational heads to win the day and prevail. But these other energies, it could see some of that activity go sideways at this time. Um, there's some of us who will find ourselves, as the children say, really in our feelings at this particular time and feeling very tenuously open, potentially because there can be a strong sense of tenderness uh, around things that maybe didn't work out, things we had to let go of but weren't ready to, things we thought would have gone one way but actually went a different way. At this time, you if you try to reach out and you don't quite get the response you were looking for, a little grace, a lot of patience, really assuming good intention from other people will go a long way way until Mercury goes direct and gets out of conversation with Neptune, that's when we'll be able to have better conversations with folks. But this particular moment in time, even though you might feel to reach out, great time for self-reflection, looking in the mirror, checking yourself, setting intentions, again, using any emotions that come up as a barometer for what works for you and what doesn't, rather than trying to get other people to get you, that's going to come later with that new moon in Capricorn in just two weeks time. So give it a minute, 
take a beat, check in with yourself, come back. If you're already in this space where you're working on setting intentions for your new year, you're trying to figure out what is going to be your next step. What is it that you want? You're really trying to understand and maybe do kind of a postmortem on 2023, what worked, what didn't, what you want and where you want to go next. Now's the time to get on my calendar before we get good and into the new year, because this new year is going to come in hot and heavy. A lot of activity going on as soon as this Mercury retrograde is done. And I'd love for you to have your plan in place and understand what your major transits of 2024 are going to be, things you need to watch out for, and things that are really going to bless you next year. Okay. Heymoonastro.com. Link is below this video. 30 minutes is all you need if you want to do a quick review of next year. But if you want to do something more in depth, the 60 minute is great. We can move eclipse to eclipse and really walk through each month of next year and get a sense of what's coming. Now, here's the thing, right? These asteroid energies are what's going to make things feel a little crazy underneath the surface, but it's the planetary energies that are going to allow things to look fine above the surface. So there's some other energies that are also alluding to the role these asteroids are playing. I'm going to get into them now. We talked about Mercury retrograde right here, 25th degree of Sagittarius, our sign of truth, clarity, higher ideals. Mercury is consciousness and communication. However, retrograde Mercury is when we have the opportunity to review and reflect and really look over things that perhaps were misaligned for us and understand either why they were misaligned or what we can do differently. Secondarily, that Mercury retrograde is going to illuminate for us our inner truth and help us get to the bottom of what works for us and what doesn't before we head into this new year. So like I said, great time to leverage this for reflection, especially because this Mercury retrograde is conjunct Mars. This is going to sharpen our clarity. Now for some, it's going to tip you over into feeling like an action is needed. For those of you who are overdue, take the action. You know who you are. But for those of you who understand like maybe what I really need to do is check in why I feel impulsive at this time, for you guys, take a beat <laughs> if you've already been taking a lot of action. Mercury retrograde conjunct Mars, actions and words taken in haste in this energy can be things that are lived to regret. It's like we live to regret them when Mercury goes direct in this instance. So here's the other thing. In your relationships, any type of relationship around you, if there's been no growth, you know, you and a person aren't getting along, you're struggling, communication is a problem, you're not seeing eye to eye. I know many people connect with family during this time of year, you may have a sibling or a relative with which that is the case. Now is not the time to try and work things out because of the way this Mercury is speaking with Neptune. The combination here will have you talking in circles and both because of the movement here of Lilith speaking to this new moon, each of you trying to get the other person to see it your way rather than trying to understand the other person first. There will be a time where it's going to be much easier to get on the same page in like literally like 15 to 25 days. So if you can just give it a moment and use this to really sink into why am I triggered, seek the insight uh, around your own emotional balance. Because with Mars in the mix, with Mercury retrograde and Neptune, maybe a little challenging to say 
say the thing that's going to build the bridge. It'll be much easier to say the thing that'll burn it. And you won't even have intended to. It's like this kind of the words just slip kind of energy. Now that's in the shadow, in the light. There is just a little bit, this energy can really foster for those of you who are creatives, your writers, your musicians, um, you know, you speak or, you know, in any way draw, but specifically I'm seeing like entertainers, performing artists in any capacity, you're going to find this energy is going to open up your channel to allow a lot of inspiration to come in. Take whatever you can, use this, use the inspiration to get your work out, get it on the page, get it, you know, capture what you're channeling. Because this is a very rare and special energy, like I said, that will open up your creative capacities. If you can use it for that, definitely do. Otherwise, use it for reflection, like I said. Um, otherwise, like I said, it'd be just too easy to walk into communication at this point with demands, expectations that other people see things our way. Um and kind of getting kind of lost in a conversation. Like, have you ever had a disagreement with someone? And how can I put it? Y'all are trying to work it out, but then like somewhere in the middle of it, one or both of you, you know, kind of loses the plot <laughs> and you forget like what the point of the conversation was. Nothing gets worked out, but you just lost the plot. This is that kind of energy. It's a great time to just use it for fun, keeping it light, do the self-reflection, and then we're going to go deep when we hit that new moon in Capricorn in just a couple of weeks. Lots of opportunity for perspective during this time. And with Neptune in the mix, some of what's happening, that why it's so foggy, why it's hazy, why there's this kind of defensiveness is because Neptune is causing us to release our attachments at this time. And that's actually a really good thing. Ways in which we might have been stuck in and thinking, you know, this person will never change or will never change, or things are always going to be this way or that way. Or we're always, you know, my, my, that's my sister. She's always like this. These kinds of old triggers can come up at this time. But because Neptune is helping us to kind of see ourselves from a, a more, the higher level perspective, a vantage point that's like from the mountaintop instead of right being in the thick of the fray, this is going to give us the opportunity to let go of some of the stories we have about other people or about ourselves so that we can actually leave the past in the past. And that's the benefit. That's the gift. That's the light side of this is it's an opportunity to really look at where am I telling myself a story that's just no longer serving me and how can I have something different? Okay. Um, lots of opportunity for self-validation, self-nurturing and this energy, like I said, Mercury direct in just a couple weeks time is going to bring some clarity for super constructive conversation as the revelations of this moment, like, re like reveal themselves to us about where we're at and who other people are, but without the revelation, trying to jump in and work stuff out right, right now, eh, talking in circles, like I said, and then here I am, I'm talking in circles. Oh my gosh, calling myself out. Okay, okay, let's keep this show moving, girl. All right, so we have also, let's talk about this Mercury-Mars situation. They are square to Juno. That's also what's bringing some of the relationship tension. It can be very motivating for finding solutions in relationship that can work for everyone, but the square requires some negotiation. It's gonna require some flexibility. It's going to require some growth and maturity to get the best from it. Because Juno's here in Virgo, it's going to be necessary that you understand what's actually important to you and what's just detail. Like what, 
you know, what, what can actually, cause what's a priority and then what's just like, eh, it would be nice, but it's not major, really good time to think through those things for yourself. Bit of an emotional test here. Um, because here, like I said, Neptune, we've got this T square, bit of an emotional test. And with these two inside, uh, these three and in, all inside mutable signs, Vestas here inside mutable sign Gemini, almost got like a mutable grand cross here. This is going to test our willingness to give grace, to not presume our own rightness, to see things from another's perspective, to be flexible about getting our own way. It'll really help. Like I said, 15 days, 30 days from now, Mercury is going to be way better place for understanding and moving forward. Mercury trying Eris is also not helping. Eris is that energy of like righteous riot and righteous rage. It's like when we've been left out, counted out and excluded, Eris's energy has a stand up for ourselves, but uh, Eris's go-to tends to be pretty petty. Um, you know, she can kind of cut off her nose to spite her face. Um, and that can go the wrong way. Like I said, Mercury is going to be way better placed shortly. So great time for self-reflection. Now, um, if you know you've been hot under the collar with some people in your life and in your self-reflection, you're already seeing, okay, this is a pattern. I always get hot with this person or I always get hot when it comes to this, that, or the following. Now's a perfect time to have a look at your chart so that we can get you out of whatever that pattern is. We can trace the root of it in your chart and I can help you figure out, okay, where is the access point to light? Because each person, even though y'all may have similar patterns, the root is unique to every single chart. If you know you're ready to break free of some of these places where you might get twisted up, either around family or people or work, now's a great time to get on my calendar. We'll sort through that so that you can finally have a bit more peace in some of the interpersonal relationship because this particular full moon in Cancer, the triggers are going to be real. I definitely see that. They'll be subtle but they'll also be loud enough for you to feel like I got to do something. And maybe there is something to do. It's just a matter of giving that pause and really thinking through what am I going for here rather than knee jerk reactions. Additionally, so here's some funness, um, Venus opposite Uranus in the sign of her fall and detriment, well, sign of detriment, um, Venus is trying this Neptune and she is sextile Pluto. So all the heavy hitters <laughs> and Uranus is also trying Juno. My friends, what a way to end a year. <laughs> My goodness. So because Uranus's influence is acting on both of our relationship planets, Juno, which deals with marriage contracts and commitments, Venus, which deals with, you know, attraction, lust, love, um, chemistry, the two of them being acted upon by a retrograde Uranus from their ruling sign. Um, this is when we could see impulsiveness have some unexpected and unintended consequences. Now on the light side, this is like the exasperation around kind of holding out like the damn breaks in relationship. You may see it's like, oh, F it. Let's just elope. Let's just get married. That kind of energy is here. Um, like exasperation around like waiting and trying to get things perfect can kind of fall by the wayside. It's like, surprise, 
uh, they proposed and we got married. It just kind of happened overnight. This kind of energy is definitely here. And but. <laughs> because Venus is in the sign of her detriment. And Uranus is retrograde and opposite the Venus. Mm. This can have us acting a bit not like ourselves in relationship right now. And some of this is going to be an urge to change, to transform and grow, but to not really know how. Um, this is a real warm up and prelude to uh, roughly five and a half months from now, Venus is going to clock in in conjunction with that Uranus. And when she does, the urge to change will be un completely unignorable. But this is kind of a warm up or a prelude or pr a prequel preview to that, I guess you could say. And this is when we see these urges, it, it what there is to do about it is to understand what is this urge within myself that's wanting something different, yearning for something new, desiring a change. What is it I'm actually looking for? Um, because with Venus and her detriment, if we're not doing that level of uh, self-reflection, some of this for some people is just going to be plain old knee-jerk self-sabotage, knowing you need to open, but then closing and not having any clue why you're doing it. Um, knowing you should reach out, but just letting the opportunity pass, knowing it would be good to apologize, but then letting yourself get distracted. Flings started under this kind of influence. It's like not even your usual type. And it's also unlike Glee to last. It's likely to be very short lived. Neptune in relationship to Venus in her detriment can also cause like a loosening of bonds or unfastening of connection and untethering here. Uh, in certain ways, it, we, it kind of erases or turns the volume down on Venus's glue. Venus can really bond us with other people. And her, her connectivity and ability to read or connect with people can also be turned down. Overall, there's purpose to this. And I really want to highlight this for, for all of us. The purpose is for our capacity to see what we've outgrown. Certainly, this Pluto is showing us, okay, something has ended. Something new is about to be reborn. See what we've outgrown. And see things from another vantage point, understand ourselves and other people without the usual expectations about what other people are about ourselves, what we should be, do, or have clouding things. It's going to facilitate some new perspective of ourselves and other people. It has, it won't be solidified. There's more information throughout the course of this Mercury retrograde, Lots more information coming online about you, about others, about your needs. It'll be a slow revelation process. But if you can make the decision, I'm going to utilize this and milk my self-reflection, come up with some new ideas. What else could be true? It's one of my favorite questions when I'm really stumped by what something somebody, somebody said or something somebody did. Well, what else could be true? Because my immediate conclusion tends to never go well for other people. <laughs> I have to really work with myself. Um, to give people the benefit of the doubt sometimes, but this is that kind of energy, giving yourself and other people that grace, that benefit of the doubt, because you're going to see people are just not going to be themselves <laughs> at this particular lunation. So just don't expect it. And that's going to be a good thing. Like I said, um, if you would like to not be yourself, you want to break some patterns, you know where to find me. Additionally, we have Jupiter, sextile, Saturn. I like this one. That's a real balancing energy. But trine, Lilith, mm, not bad. 
but not, necess not necessarily helpful in this kind of energy. Um, it really echoes the previously mentioned need to be mindful of when we think we have the corner of the market on truth or right. Uh, especially because this trying to fool us here and the sun can have us really thinking we've got it. Um, but opposite Chericlo, or sorry, square Chericlo, there's the square to Chericlo, and opposite the creation goddess. It's just easy to miss some of the nuanced details about where other people may be at around certain things or why they may have done certain things that they've done. It may be easy for other people to miss that about us as well. It'd be easy to be misunderstood in this energy. So a little bit of the energies asking us to just sit tight. <laughs> the call for self-examination is great at this time in any type of self-improvement project with this particular energy is going to yield phenomenal results whether it's, you know, like I'm going to take on a weight loss routine or a weight gain routine. I'm going to take on an exercise routine, or I'm going to take on a, um, a new diet or a new financial routine, like managing my money in some new ways, or, you know, I'm going to detox and declutter my house any type of self-improvement under this energy is a perfect way to use it because there's lots of energy here. Use it to cultivate your own capacity to jump forward. And then shortly here, it'll be much clearer and there'll be a lot more understanding about what to do with your beloveds uh, as Mercury begins to go direct again. Um, because some of what's happening with all of this and uh, Jupiter wants to think he has the truth, but I can promise you with Lilith in this position and Mercury retrograde, Jupiter does not. Um, it'll be really important to give people some space and some grace um, and then to have productive conversation once Mercury is better placed. <laughs> Um, it'll it's an opportunity here within this to learn about our true selves and what we need and want as well. Um, you may find that you're asked for advice in this energy. Um, so make sure you give it from the vantage point of helping others get to what they want and need rather than what you think they want and need and should do. It's definitely something I've had to be mindful of. I've been asked for advice several different times in the last week. I've had to say to people, well, wait a minute. What is it that you actually want here? How do you want to feel? If you could have it all your way, how would that look? Like if we could wave a magic wand and this, we could just get this to go your way, what is it? help people from that vantage point because their truth is always a great guide for them. Um, but sometimes it takes somebody curious enough to listen, help them listen to themselves to be able for them to be able to surface it. So, okay, guys, um, let me close this, clear all the drawings. If you would like to book a reading with me, I'm over at kmoonastro.com. Um, Self-improvement, lots of balancedness on the surface, but just remember, we never really know what people are dealing with beneath the surface. And this particular full moon definitely shows us that a lot of people can be all smiles or look really balanced, but there could be a lot happening behind the scenes. So you know, give everyone a little grace, including yourself. Let's do first look together. I'm going to pull up the new moon in Capricorn and we'll have a little chat about where things are headed from here. Amazing. Okay. So here is our new moon in Capricorn on January 11th. 
2024, 6.57 a.m. Again, check your time zone, check a time zone converter for a local time if you're not on the eastern seaboard of the United States. Let's have a look. Um, new moon, Capricorn right there. Oh, and it's conjunct Pluto. Aren't we going to kick off with a bang? Okay. All right. I see you 2024. Thank you. And <laughs> we have a trine to Juno and a trine to Uranus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not coming in easy. Coming in hot. I see. Thank goodness Mercury will be direct. Um, still not quite placed where I would prefer to see it, but definitely better than where I just did see it. I don't like seeing Mercury and Neptune in square unless we're talking about spiritual pursuits and the arts um once mercury gets out of sag and into capricorn on the other side so we're talking about like january 15th and onward boom it's like there's another shoe that's about to drop somewhere in between now and this new moon in terms of our clarity about what we want, what we need, why we need it, and how we're going to go about getting it and the conversations we need to have with invested parties, there's some sort of information that's not going to be clear until we get to the other side of January, the second half of January. Pluto's bringing some intensity for change. So too is Uranus. And it's definitely about relationships with Juno here. There's some realignment of partnership, contracts, negotiations. There's a cha changing of the guard, if you will, around some of the people you may be involved with and affiliated with. Um, yeah, this is a coming in hot kind of new moon. So take this time to reflect have some ease, have some fun, keep it light. Cause the minute we get into the new year, it's, it's, it's going to be on in terms of like making change and getting things done. A lot of people are going to be able to feel this heightened sense of, I got to do it. And it has to be now. Um, and a sense of personal deep commitment to transformation as well, like a need to start something new. Um, so if you're already feeling this energy, I mean, I can definitely tell I'm feeling it. It's because there's so much cardinal energy here and at the previous lunation as well. Cardinal energy likes new beginnings. Its response to life is to begin again, begin anew, to start things. And so with so much cardinal energy at this new moon, especially in earth signs, this is like a change to our third dimension that we start to initiate to really call things out of the ether and place them into the world. So fun times. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much for liking, watching, subscribing, and for all of you who share, thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. If you'd like to book some time with me, I'm over at kmoonastro.com. Take great care and have a great holiday and happy new year. Bye for now.